itchy. Tasty. That's not a skin rash, that's a zombie plague. Don't worry, someone will make a buck off of it. Today we're diving into the world of survival horror with Resident Evil. But this isn't just about zombies and monsters. It's about the dark and twisted world of Big Pharma. So grab your crossbow bolts, your acid grenade, and your first aid spray, because things are about to get pharmaceutical in Raccoon City. Welcome to Deep Thoughts While Gaming. I'm Chris Chow. The Resident Evil series delves deep into the horrors of the Umbrella Corporation and explores mysteries such as what does a massive pharmaceutical company do when the perfect cure for anything is to chew on a green plant? That can't be great for their profit shares, right? Well, they make zombies. That's right, zombies. Oh, and weird eyeless things with long tongues. There's gotta be a market for that, right? Yes, there's a reason why no one blinked when Capcom decided their evil empire was going to be a pharmaceutical company. We've all had our experiences with profit-driven medical advancements. After all, it was one year before the release of Resident Evil in 1996 that Purdue Pharma got approval for OxyContin and unleashed a real-life zombie-like plague on all of us. Things like a sprawling underground facility filled with homicidal plants and insane monsters, while frightening, seem altogether plausible for Big Pharma when their profits are threatened. Seriously, those green herbs are to blame for all this, right? After its initial release, Resident Evil instantly gained acclaim for its atmosphere of suspense and horror. Players chose the role of Chris Redfield or Jill Valentine and explore a dark mansion infested with zombies and strange, barely sensical puzzles. Am I the only one that ever wondered how the Umbrella staff actually gets to work in the morning? If you haven't played the games before, the horror is on par with trying to navigate insurance for prescription medicines, except it's zombies trying to eat you instead of corporate greed. Me personally, I take the zombies. With the success of the first game, Capcom has had no trouble churning out sequels for an awaiting audience. And why wouldn't they? They certainly have enough real-world material to draw on. Remember the pharma bro who raised the price on life-saving drugs by 5,000%? Don't tell me that guy wouldn't inject himself with some kind of super virus to try and kill you at the end of the game. He might have a tentacle or two slithering around his shirt right now. Yeah, he's final boss material for sure. Part of the draw for Resident Evil is the survival horror aspect, which works best when ammunition is limited. One moment you're rolling in bullets, and the next you're counting each round, unsure if you have enough in the chamber to bring down the next zombie, let alone the next zombie dog to jump in through a window. It's kind of like that whole EpiPen controversy, when the price went from $94 to $609 in the span of a few years. Instead of counting acid grenade rounds and achievement scores, people were counting dollars and wondering if they'd still be able to hit the grocery store at the end of the week. Now I'm not one to sit here and cry into my coat sleeve and overly demonize the pharmaceutical companies, emphasis on the overly demonized because they certainly deserve some of it. But there have been some undeniably amazing results from their progress. Everything from new immunotherapy treatments that have revolutionized cancer treatments to advanced personalized approaches with gene testing to target rare diseases. So there is progress, it's just expensive progress. Chris Redfield was probably undergoing some personalized medical treatments himself when he got so jacked. People don't go from zero to boulder punching on goodwill and hard work alone, after all. Despite all the common irritations, it's really amazing to sit back and look at how far medical progress has come in just a few lifetimes. It wasn't really that long ago that people were sticking leeches on their bodies to suck out all that rotten blood. Come to think of it though, I'm pretty sure Umbrella has toyed with reviving that idea a few times. That all aside, it really gives you pause to wonder what the future will be like with real-world research into things like CRISPR and gene editing, challenging what the definition of human really is. Maybe things like rabid monster men, mutated evil scientists, rocket launchers, and boulder punching really is something in the future for all of us. One can only hope. Yes, despite costs, the future appears to be a bright one with clear progress. Look no further than Resident Evil itself. From its early days with a moldy, stitched-together corpse man nemesis, to today with a sexy vampire Lady D, that's undeniable progress on any metric. While four of America's biggest pharmaceutical companies were recently successfully sued for $26 billion for their role in the opioid crisis, 
As with all Resident Evil games, there's always another larger and more threatening final boss waiting for you. Sometimes it's a weird nine-foot-tall naked man that Albert Wesker thinks is the ultimate life form for some reason. Other times it's a, well, a weird blob thing with tentacles. Actually, it's been a weird blob thing a few times. I feel like there's a metaphor there. Thank you for watching Deep Thoughts While Gaming. And remember, if your life is starting to feel a little bit stale, it could just be because you're actually made of mold.